In this video, I want to show you how you can benefit from your locally installed LLM when you are coding programs, or in my case, creating code for algorithmic trading strategies. We are going to connect our VS Code editor to our locally hosted language model to optimize our coding sessions. Let's do this step by step and start with the requirements to follow this video. To begin with the code editor, you should already have installed VS Code on your machine to follow this instruction. And then, you should also have installed Olama and a large language model locally. And if you don't know how to do this, then watch my previous video. There I explain in 10 minutes how you can install Olama and the large language models, because it's uh, super easy and everybody can do this I believe. After you have done this and Olama is running locally, you can proceed with the next steps. Open VS Code and search for the extension Continue. Then install that extension. And after this has been done, the Continue button will pop up in your sidebar. If not, then you'll have to probably restart VS Code. If you have the button, you can click on it and then the prompt window opens. In my case, you can see that it already has Claude Sonnet as its default language model set. And it could be that after you have installed it, you see other language models. But don't be scared because we can add our own models here. And all we have to do for it is to click on this little cog icon. This will open the config.json file of continue. And here we can configure our own Olama server and the models it contains. Now I already have prepared a configuration file and I will copy and paste the settings into the configuration file next. What you see here are the following settings. The first setting contains the models I have installed on my Olama server. And each has a title that will be shown in the drop down menu on the prompt window. Then the provider should be configured, here in my case Olama server. The next setting is the IP address and port number on which the language model is served. In my case the Olama server is running on the same computer where I use VS Code, so I can set localhost here. But if you work on a laptop and use a centralized server at home, then this should contain the IP address of the server that's running Olama. Here the model should contain the model name obviously, and then there is a system message that you can give to the model. In this case these are the system default messages. But the great part is that you can alter this system message in such a way that it is completely pre-configured on how you want to respond it to your question. Now I haven't tried this yet, but I think that you can also create multiple responses that can be based on the same model, by creating multiple titles and different system messages. Now a little bit down in this config file, you can also see that I have created an auto tab completion model. And this model is used when you are going to type code and it responds with suggestions to auto complete your code. Now I haven't tried these uh, context providers yet, so you'll have to look this up in the documentation. But for me, this basic configuration is enough to get me started using VS Code with an AI assistant. These should work similarly as a GitHub Copilot or Cursor, without having to pay these ridiculous amounts of money for their service. So let's give it a test run to see how it works. I'll ask the language model to create a piece of Python code that prints Fibonacci numbers between 0 and 100. So let me open a new file and let's create a Python file for it. And here you can choose the model that you want to use to create the code. Let's use DeepSeek as an example. And I'll add the instructions here. See how fast this code is generated? Wow! Let's add it to the file and save it. And have to give it a nice name too. Then let's run it from the terminal and wow, bang! All the Fibonacci numbers between 0 and 100. Let's check if auto-completion works as well. I'll add a description to this function too, and in this case it fully understands the mission and automatically creates the description here. Now let's do some other random stuff in the code as well. First I'll make the counter go to 1000. And then add some inline comments as well. And let's finally create a comment and see if the autocomplete recognizes the assignment. And it actually does, wow, this is amazing. I can see now why everybody is so hyped up. Let's check if the code works, and it does too, wow, wow, incredible. 
I already can see so much potential here. And if I can also add a separate rack system as well, wow. But let's keep this for another time. I hope that I gave you enough information to add this to VS Code and start to optimize your coding sessions. Now thanks for watching and click like and subscribe or give a comment if you want to see more of this in the future. For now, uh, I think this is it and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.